now recognize myself for five minutes. And these will be rapid fire, if, if I may. I mean, if you need to, to uh, go into an extended explanation, then, then do so. Um, on the enforcement of tax laws, uh, the information that I have, uh, you, you showed $385 billion tax gap in 2006. Do you know what it was in 2016? Uh, it's uh, the equivalent number, the net tax gap is about uh, $406 billion. Okay. Uh, and how about 2015? Well, they only measure it every once in a while. Every so, once in a while? Yeah, yeah. So they don't measure it every okay. year. That, that, that's the latest estimate is a net tax gap of over $400 billion. I um, saw a number yesterday. Well, the net. Now, that's, uh, I'm glad you clarified because yeah. the total tax gap was like 456. That, that's correct. And, they and then they expect 50, to collect right. so much. Okay. Right. That, that's, I gave you the number that compared to the right. 385. Yeah, yeah. thank you. That, uh, and I appreciate the clarification. On the uh, improper payments, that's a, a big deal with me. I think we've had this conversation before. Um, the 36, um, uh, the improper payments doesn't account for all the improper uh, uh, proper payments on Medicaid. You made that. You said it's thirty-six billion, right. and then approximately another sixty billion on Medicare. Right. You, on the Medicaid, you said it didn't account for all of it. So yeah, the you have a, a, ball, a ballpark. On, no, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. How about on Medicare? Do you think that represents all the improper payments there? Th that estimate's pretty good okay. on uh, on Medicare, and that, now that they're measuring all parts of Medicare, you know. So we're right at a hundred million dollars a year. Uh, and this has been going up, isn't yes, it? Yes, that, that's correct. It's okay. been going up. So it hasn't, hasn't improved. Um, I was informed a few days ago that, that there may be some indication that, the, that not all federal agencies are reporting improper payments. That's correct. I'm very concerned about that. I pointed that out. There were at least a dozen programs that did not report this past year. One was the uh, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, or the old food stamp uh, program. The temporary assistance for needy families has never reported. They don't believe that they can do it. I've encouraged Congress to pass legislation that require them to, to make that effort. Uh, and a number of agencies just haven't done it. So I, the estimates, government-wide estimate of $144 billion for 16 is not a complete estimate. And, and we've flagged this for a number of years on our government-wide audit is that the federal government doesn't have reasonable assurance that it knows the full extent of improper payments and can address those issues. Ninety percent of the improper payments of the last figure are overpayments. There are some that are underpayments. That's a problem, too, because somebody should be getting a benefit isn't, but most of it are overpayments. Well, here's the thing that concerns me. I'm also on the Budget Committee, and I made this point that there are days I feel like my head will explode. Uh, we're expending money improperly uh, and not properly funding other programs where we're, we're now obviously deficit spending. So we're literally borrowing money uh, and paying interest on it as a result of improper payments and the failure to fully collect all the taxes. Uh, that's exactly I mean, you right. add these, these <clears throat> two together, and, and again, to your yeah. point that we don't know that this is all that's being expended improperly. Right. We're talking almost $600 billion and in our 10-year window. That's $6 trillion, and it's going up. Right. And we're, having, mm -hmm. and, and we're laying that on future generations plus interest. Right. That's right. maddening. Yes. Yes, it is. I testified before the Senate Finance Committee on this very issue. I'd like to submit my statement for the record, both on a tax gap and improper payments. Uh, I think, I mean, it won't solve our long-term sustainable fiscal path, but it will make a huge contribution if we could get these two areas under control. I, I thank you for that and with that objection. Um, I want to go back to something Ms. Uh, um, uh, Holmes Norton brought up about the, the revenues from the Bureau of Land Management. And uh, how much is reported that we collected in, in royalties and revenues? Yeah, I'll have to go. Oh. Here, I have an answer quick yeah. for you. We're, okay. trying, we're yeah. rapid fire. Yeah, we're, we're trying for, to oil, for oil and gas, it's about Well, 10. I have the gavel, so we'll, we'll be a little flexible. <laughs> okay. It's about $10 billion a year for oil and gas. Okay. Um, th there's a number of reports that indicate that uh, the revenues over a 15-year period from uh, as a result of, of repealing the ban on exporting crude oil should increase. But one of the things that, that I found out, and, and I want to clarify this and make sure I heard it right, uh, the last... 
uh, that I heard, we hadn't increased the royalty rate since the 1920s. Is that correct, or did that change? There have been changes since the 1920s. The, 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 the major law, one of the major laws is from the 1920s. Mm -hmm. uh, but there hasn't been a huge change in recent years in the royalty rates, both onshore and offshore. But there has been some tweaking. What is the royalty rate? Um, it ranges from about 12 to 18 percent, depending if it's onshore or offshore. What's the um, royalty rate that uh, private sector, uh, 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 private landowners get? Um, that, that can range. Um, I, I, we could give you some, some estimates of that. Obviously, we are only familiar with the federal rules. On the and high I, end, though, I think it's less than, yeah, it's, more is, than, it's more than what the federal government gets. Yeah, really. there, there's a study that compared federal government to state governments and what they receive as well as the private sector. We can get you a summary of that yeah. study. I'd appreciate that. Uh, uh, continuing on our rapid fire deal on the improper payments, and I think you may have addressed this, but uh, on the uh, Social Security disability programs, uh, I'm, I know we're expending money improperly there as a result of the failure to, to do the three-year reviews. Uh, yeah. So if, if we could, I'd like to, if you've got a number on that, you can submit that to us later. I want to ask you something about federal real property, and um, has there been any estimate for how much could be sold and how much revenue would be generated from that? Not, there's not an estimate I'm aware of. I'll double check, and if so, I'll submit it. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you do that, could you also include uh, an estimated savings on maintenance and upkeep? Okay. Because that, that, that is uh, an annual expenditure that uh, we want to address. I want to ask you another one, um, and this has to do with uh, you've made – uh, progress in, in getting these uh, agencies to meet the criteria, and you show that um, that the benefits, approximately 240 billion, are uh, over our uh, over that 10-year period, about 24 billion a year. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea if what what that financial benefit would be to the federal government if if all of the agencies met the criteria? No, I don't have an estimate on that. But most of that money comes from uh, DOD weapon systems that we've been able to curtail. A lot of it's Medicare, Medicaid, and, uh, and the tax revenue side. So it's all big areas. If we could continue to, to I think those areas have huge potential. I, I know it's tens of billions. I mean, I, I just don't have a complete estimate. All right. And uh, Mr. Desaunier, no, it was Mr. Cartwright. I apologize. Uh, the, uh, no mistaken identity here, uh, brought up uh, uh, the issue of climate change. Uh, has uh, uh, the GAO looked into the, the federal government and the national the nation's exposure to an EMP event, electromagnetic pulse event? Uh, we, actually, we have, and uh, I'll submit those reports for the record. Uh, without objection. Uh, and then uh, the last thing I just, and this is a clarification, um, when someone was asking about the um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and indicated that uh, that they have loan uh, have guarantees backing them up uh, that are 200 billion, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit more. There was an article in the Washington Post uh, last October that indicated that uh, that uh, guarantee was only about 83 billion. Uh, could could someone just check into that and clarify that? Yeah, we'll, we'll clarify for the record, but I'm, I'm pretty confident on our, on our number. Yeah. Well, I, I, I just saw that, and I'm not questioning your number. I just I, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page on okay. that. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll check what the Post was talking about, and we'll, we'll check our number, and then uh, we'll, uh, I'll give it for the record. Okay. Do you have questions? All right. Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Wisconsin.